Hello and welcome. This video is a beginner's guide to 3D animation. I'm gonna be explaining what animation actually is, foundational concepts that originate in traditional hand-drawn techniques, and how to make a simple 3D animation using Unreal Engine, which is the software that I use as a professional 3D artist. So the first question we have to answer is what actually is animation? I know it's confusing because the word animation is thrown around a lot in many contexts. 3D animation, we use animation to refer to hand-drawn animation, 2D animation, like old Disney movies, Hakuna Matata, or old anime, Peanuts, Sanko. But on a basic level, animation is the craft of designing movement. This could be objects moving, characters moving around, ah, oh, you're an outcast, and acting, cars moving. This could be light moving. So once we know that, it's the design of movement. How do we actually approach this design of movement? And this is where it's different depending on your medium. In the case of traditional animation, you have hand drawings that you make for each frame of the video. To understand this, we just need to know that videos are still images strung together that play in sequence. In the case of traditional hand-drawn animation, you have an artist drawing every single one of those frames, which in the case of film is 24 frames per second. In some styles of animation, you might draw every second frame or every fourth frame. This is called animating on twos or animating on fours. In our context, in the computer, when we're talking about computer animation, it's related to this more traditional process, but we have a slightly different approach. In hand-drawn animation, they came up with a few phrases which I'd like to define and are prerequisites to really understanding how 3D animation works. These two words will solve all your problems. The first phrase is key poses. Key poses are your main storytelling poses. They're the most important position that the object could be at that point in time. If I have an animation of a character feeling surprise, the first key pose is just normal and the second key pose is very surprised. Those are two key poses, okay? And often those poses were timed so they knew how long it would take for the character to make that expression. They say, well, the first pose is at frame one and the surprised face is at frame 10. We know that's how long the animation is. Once the animation was finished like that, you would add what's called in-betweens. And in-betweens are exactly what they sound like. They're drawings that come in between the key poses. So we have key poses, we have in-betweens. Now, when we're talking about three 3D animation, the way we use it is that we have key poses. We have one key pose and another key pose. And what the computer is gonna do is it's gonna fill in every drawing in between those two poses or every frame, I'm gonna start saying. So that when we play the animation, it's just gonna go So we're telling the computer, frame one, I want my ball to be here. Frame 10, I want my ball to be here. But what if I want my ball to not just go from this position to this position, but I want it to make an arc? then I need three key poses. I need this position, this position, and this position. Let's take a look at what this would look like inside of Unreal Engine. I have set up this scene as an example. I have my Chrome ball here, and I'm gonna be moving it across the screen over time, creating an animation. The first thing that I need to do animation is to create what's called a sequence. What is a sequence? The sequence is gonna be what plays through my animation, and it's gonna be how I tell Unreal Engine what happens at each moment in time. So I'm gonna come to my content browser here, right click, come to animation, and I'm gonna create a level sequence right here. I'm gonna call it L underscore ball anim. Double click to open it up, and this is what I will see. Very basically, we have a timeline here. If I hit play in the bottom left corner, you will see that it plays through the animation from left to right. So how many frames, how many drawings, and the way we change that is up here where it says 30 FPS. So 30 frames per second. How many drawings is it gonna cycle through in one second, okay? And for you, most likely, you're gonna just be keeping it at 30 or changing it to 24, which is kind of the standard for film. I like to keep it at 30 because it's just my preference, but totally up to you. So we're gonna keep it at 30 here. And my timeline is gonna be as long as I tell it to be in these bottom left and right corners. To animate something, what we need to do is drag it into this sequence because there are a lot of objects in our scene and not all of them are being animated. So what we wanna do is tell Unreal Engine that this is the object that we're animating 
right now. I can come up to the sphere that I have inside of my outliner and drag it into the sequencer and it will make a track for it. There are lots of things about this sphere that we could animate, but if we're animating it moving across the screen, the thing that we're animating is its transform, its position in space. So this is what we want. We're going to expand this and we can see that it has location, rotation, and scale underneath it. Instead of actually making a new drawing for this sphere at the beginning and end position, we are going to be setting these features of the object and bookmarking them or keyframing them. So to add a keyframe to tell Unreal Engine, I want this sphere to be at this point at the beginning of my timeline. Drag over my playhead here to add a keyframe. I can come over here to this plus button here to add a keyframe to the transformation track. So if I go ahead and click that, you can see it adds these red dots, which is telling me that I've set a keyframe here. We have the first keyframe. Now we need to come to the end of the timeline at the point that we want the object to have moved. And we're going to go ahead and just grab the sphere and move it. So we've moved the sphere. I'm going to come back and add another keyframe because as I'm moving it, it's keeping track of where it is in space. So all I need to do is just tell it at this point in time, this is where it should be. Add a keyframe. If I go ahead and hit play, it's just gonna smoothly transition between those two points. And that is your first animation. So you might be thinking, okay, well, this is, I get this, this is simple, but what if I want a more complicated motion? What if I want the object to make a loop-de-loop -loop or something? That's when you start adding additional keyframes. For example, I could come to the middle of this motion here and I could say, I want the object to be big at this point in the frame, grow really big and then get small again. I can go ahead, change to my scale tool here, make the sphere really big in the middle. And then again, I go to the transform, add a keyframe. And if I wanted to, I could even just only add a keyframe on the scale track here. So let me actually show you what that would be like. So if I go ahead and scale this up, nothing's really changed besides the scale of the object. So I don't technically need to keyframe any of the other parts of the object, the transform or rotation. So I could just come here and add a keyframe to the scale track. So now if I come back to the beginning again and I play, it's gonna scale up and then down at the end. And then again, I could as well start to give a little bit of a wiggly motion. I can move it up here, add a keyframe, come to the middle, move it down a little bit, add a keyframe, move up a little bit to make the squiggle at the end, add a keyframe. And now if I play through, I have a little bit more complicated of a motion. So this is how we start to refine the motion of our animation. We set up our key poses and we start adding frames in between those key poses to refine the motion even further. Now this can definitely get complicated when you start to think about hands moving, characters moving, faces moving. But if you understand this concept that originates in hand-drawn animation of key poses and in-betweens, you can start to break down more complicated animation. I'm gonna be making some more videos specifically on more complicated types of animation. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss those. If you'd like to learn more about Unreal Engine as a filmmaking tool, I have a free training which I built, which you can find in the description below. Good luck and I'll see you in the next one.